Hi everyone, very cute jam here coming at you with another session of my Water Deep campaign. In last session, our players came, went to Snowflake via being masquerading as mercenaries for um, Lord, um, I think Gregory's or Wilfred's uh, caravan, and they were supposed to meet a woman by the name of Amrishard at Snowflake. She is a former member of the Order of the Gauntlet. Unfortunately, they missed each other several times because apparently my players thought, hey, she should be talking in code. Amishard had been out of practice as a paladin for a while and is not really that knowledgeable of sneakiness. So she eventually found them. She told them that they were to disembark on a journey on the flying fish captained by a halfling named Captain Dogwood that would sail them out to the open seas. And that is where we find our party today, about to disembark from Snowflake. Look. Yes, that's great. Let's do this. All right. So last time you guys were in Snowflake, you got ambushed by some assassins. Assassins died. So therefore, no more problem. Uh, yeah. 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 It's, it's great. Seems um, about right. Yep. 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 Uh, Captain Dogwood is expecting you on the flying fish in the morning. And yeah, the, the rest of the night passed without incident, surprisingly. Um, you think it's probably you know, more of the cult of new one that's trying to kill all of you, but you know that that technicalities, technicalities, technicalities. We're trying to kill all of them, so it's all balanced. So. It it's very, very, very balanced. I'm not trying to kill anybody. Yes, you are. No, I'm just trying to stop a god, an evil god, from coming back to life by killing everybody who wants to resurrect them. No, by stopping them. The killing them is if they don't give me another option. I can just be like, hey, you want to just not do that? And I can be like, yeah, sure. We'll go, you know, garden or something. All right. Uh, Marwan has a bounty on his head. Um, so do the rest of you. Uh, and I, I believe you all are going by code names still. Okay. So morning comes at the inn. Breakfast is, you know, served downstairs. Uh, is there anything in town you would like to do before you disembark for your journey on your journey? Did I get all the items I asked you for last time? Yes, you got all the items. Yeah, all right. and I also bought. Uh, I'd like to get clothes that make me look like a merchant. Yep, that that is totally that's totally cool. Um, specifically, fabric merchant of some sort. Fa fabric, uh, alcohol. Alcohol, fabric, okay. Uh, and I have cigars, tobacco, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Basic trade goods of that nature. Okay. Oh, you're a death peddler. Fine spices, chocolates, candy. <laughs> he's a death. Pe he's a death peddler. Tor torture things. devices. <laughs> get, get, get your torture devices here. Uh, Marwin, where are you up to? Your mic's muted. Uh, Thank you. No, no, it's never muted. Uh huh. Um, oh, I, hey, I, I think I'm just. Well, no, yeah, I'm just resting. I, I, I believe. Maybe I, I'm talking to the. Does that kid still around? Still in this crew? Uh, the kid. Um, yeah. You haven't seen him around. No, that's unfortunate. Yeah, that's 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 terribly unfortunate. There has been rumors flying that uh, uh, Miss Amrishard has been vandalizing the city, but it turned out to be an imposter of some sort. Um, you know, typical things that happen typically every day. So, I'm Actually, gonna write her a, an anonymous apology. Actually, I'm going to look for materials to make a guitar. Okay. Um, so you're looking for... Horse guts. Yeah, pretty much horse guts. I, actually, it's more I'm trying to make a, a, a an electric guitar. I see. And I have a stone that can power it. Oh, no. 
No. I'm trying to think of creative spells and no. ideas. So I'm going to make a ball stone powered electric guitar. You're going to use the souls of part of a god to power your musical instrument. It's going to take a, a while. A murder god. And by the way, like a death murder god, I cannot think of anything more appropriate to power a rock guitar. That's actually... I'm going to be playing the Evanescence, a little bit of Metallica. Maybe a little no, 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 Iron no, 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 no. Maiden. We're, 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 going, we're going with Slayer if you're going to do that. If you're going to pull okay, that you kind of You want me to shit. go even darker? I can. Slayer. I'll probably work my way no. down. Um, uh, That's what was some it? mayhem. <laughs> Guar, you know, things like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll, 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 well, you have to put it together first. So it's not it something take, I'm going to It's going to take me months to build. It's going to take you a while, but... You know, who, who knows? You'll be, you'll be playing um, Rain in Blood soon. Uh, Evan Wood? It's you... Rain in Blood. Let me check um... my... Uh, you had blood it. Go ahead, check it and see. <laughs> um, I just want to make sure that I'm topped off on all of my um, resources for long-distance travel, etc. Okay. Food, oh, yeah, food sure water, that. potions of healing, etc. Yeah, I'm going to get more food. At least, at least cl half a month's worth, if not... I mean, I, so I have listed that I've got winter cloaks and, and camping gear and food and stuff. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You, 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 you all have that. Winter uh, tent, blankets. Okay. Uh, yeah, you guys, like, you guys are pretty much very well prepared for this journey to the north. Uh, Marwin, was there anything that you wanted to get? Um, oh, if you are looking for trail rations, Mr. Roland, then they are... One trail ration is... There we go. One ration, one day's rations is two pounds, so just please be aware of what you are carrying. Um, um I have a, a bag of holding. Oh, right. You have the bag. Yeah, we actually have two bags of holding. Two bags of holding. I um, forget. It's been a couple of weeks. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. Um, I would actually like to pick up a set of uh, lock picks if I could. Not a complete thieves tool set, just just some normal lock picks. Yeah, you can you could probably pick that up in town. There, that probably has no problem. You can go to a blacksmith that would probably have some on hand already, or a locksmith uh, even. I, w I would like to have them hidden in something like my shoe or my boot or something like that. Okay, um, I'll make a note. Of that. Hidden somewhere that so hidden somewhere that it wouldn't normally be uh, removed if I was somehow captured or put into a uh, confines or something. Okay, very good. Um, you guys also still have that feather to that feather swan boat token. Yep. Just in case, remember it holds up to forty eight people, medium size, of course. And... Yeah, who's got that on them? Roland? Yeah. Okay. And Marwin. I, I, you know. you, you're just resting. You're just chilling out and writing your apology letter to Miss Amber Shard. Ms. Yeah, Ambershard. I'm starting to feel bad about that. Mm -hmm. And while we're waiting, I'm going to be studying the scroll ascending. I'm going to make my version of that spell. Okay. All right. That That's... That's totally kosher. Because it, it's, it's available for bard, but not sorcerer, so I'm going to make a sorcery bard version. All right. Um, that, will, that will take a, a little bit, not as long as your electric guitar, but it, it, it is totally feasible. Okay. So. What would happen if I played a ballstone-powered electric guitar in a, in a pool where they store all the ballstones? Will they resonate? I, I don't think resonation works like you think it does. Are we talking about like spiritual resonation or are we talking about like harmonic resonation? Because those are two very different things. Harmonic. Then no. It could cross spiritually though. I, it, it, magic. Magic. What, what if I play instead of for that one time I play like a happy song? Does it make Balls make, make, make him no longer the island. god of death and murder? Make him the god of bunnies and flowers? He's actually already the god of bunnies and flowers and death and murder. All right. Yeah, you just don't hear about the other two too often. Right. Okay, so I will all move you to. That's how you explain the Monty Python bunny. The. The Vorpal bunny. Yes. The Vorpal mm -hmm. rabbit. The Vorpal rabbit. Here's the boat. Uh, pretend there's a dock next to the boat. Uh, I was, I 
could have found a, a dock, but I was too lazy to put him in. I will bring your characters to... I'm not playing D&D &D to use my imagination, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> Byron's got a good point. I am sorry that your, imagi that your imagination is... No, I'm, I'm not fucking sorry. I, it, it took me a while. Whoa, 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 to... Darren, yeah. language. It took actually, me a actually, while. Actually, before I leave, I get a book on how to sail a ship. In it, five easy steps. In five easy... <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Or maybe six, so depending on what they say. Um, Unfurl the sails. <laughs> sailing for dummies. Sailing for dummies. All right, Stand in I, front of the wheel. Forget that your anchor's down. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we going so slowly? All right, and that is Evanwood, and that is where is Roland? There you go. And we'll pretend Ginger is somewhere in the ship being seasick, because that's usually what that that happens on long sea voyages. So you get up to the dock. Uh, the flying fish is a galleon, actually. It's a huge ship. And capping it is... That is no galleon. Use your imagination. We're, we're looking from far, far away. So it looks smaller than... Alright, fine. You're all right, fine. It's a four-gun vessel. <laughs> I, I, Marlon, what are you doing? I'm being a crow. Ha! Do you want, do, do, do you want to give me a, a climb check for that? A, a athletics check? Do I want? Do I want to? Could or... you please <laughs> give me an athletics check to see if you can climb on top? Uh, yeah. It, it's a pretty easy. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> Marwin, you you don't even get like two feet up until your your foot gets tangled in one of the ropes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but. You know, as Marwin darts up the ship, just looking around at everything, um, your captain is actually at the wheel. Captain Dogwood is a halfling. Short in stature, but not short in heart. Uh, he has uh, greasy, greasy brown hair, uh, hazel eyes, a chiseled little... jaw. <laughs> Somewhat of a chiseled jaw. Uh, a pseudo dragon, a purple pseudo dragon which sits upon his shoulder. And. Sweet. I want a pseudo dragon. Those things are amazing. And he is, you know, currently barking orders when he sees Marwin run up the gangplank onto the ship. He blinks, you know, a few times and then he. Are you. Going after Marwin, or are you guys just walking towards the ship, like leisurely? I... We're on the ship, right? Aren't we on the ship? Well, let's... yeah, you're on the ship. <laughs> we skipped. We skipped part. We skipped by the whole getting on the ship thing. Yeah. Now yeah. there. Now there's a ship in front of us. Right, you're on the ship, um, but you're still at dock, as this picture does not uh, show very, very well. And he, you know, he greets you when you get on board. He, you know, he spoke to Evanwood, but I don't believe he spoke to Roland or Marwin. Um, Roland, are he, so he walks up to you, you know, kind of, you know, dusts himself off. He, you know, sticks a hand in your direction and he's, and he says, I am Captain Dogwood and you might be, who are you, who might you be, sir? Oh, I'd be Fainor, the, the musician. I see. And your friend who is trying to climb up one of my, uh, one of the masks, uh, well, uh, who might he be? That's our, that's our idiot. Can you watch him for us? Um. He, he's the clown or the jester. He'll ouch. entertain your men. <laughs> I, I, I don't really have too much time to keep an eye on him, but I can ask the, the crew to... Keep an eye on him just in case he goes overboard. How how valuable is he to your eh? to your merry band? Eh. Entertainment and morale purposes. Um, he, I mean, we can probably find another jester. 
he, he he's just doing, saying he's he's doing quite a good job on the entertainment value you see a couple of the crew um around them the, the two at the end kind of kind of snickering as he's as marwin are you trying to free yourself from the rope yet well no i, I want to go up there i want to get up there <laughs> um all right. Uh, how would you climb up the mast differently, as opposed to just trying to get up the rope? <laughs> like um, the way you do. I, I, uh, would you ask I, for like I, I a wanna, boost no, from somebody? I'm or? Try, yeah, yeah. I want to try to persuade someone to, to to you know build you know be a human ladder for me. All right. Why not? Why not? Yeah. There's already a rope ladder. Yeah, he's not yeah, using. Yeah, but it I can't. Very... I'm not good at. I'm not good at the ropes. Where the humans, I can. I can. I can order them around. <laughs> um. This gentleman. Do you want somebody to piggyback carry you up? This Pretty gentleman, much. Like, right... like if if he would. This gentleman right here. He has a, a very large scar trailing down the left side of his face. He's dressed in mostly rags, and he has um a scimitar to. Um, on his rope belt, and he's he's kind of looking at you, and he's he says, "Do you need some help, sir?" Yeah, yeah. Can you get me up there? I don't know. It looks, you know, you might hurt yourself if you go up there. Uh, doubtful. I mean, I've survived a lot. I can survive a freaking. Mast or whatever. <laughs> As I hear your wife laughing in the background. He is a gummy bear. He goes bouncing here and there and everywhere. All right. Um, just for he kind of smiles at you, and it's like, all right, fine. Let me give you a boost. Do you now have advantage on your roll? Uh, what was that? Athletics. Excellent. Athletics. All right. Um, better. Much better. So you're able to grab onto the rope ladder a little more, you know, steadily, and you start making your way up the mast. Uh, the other crew members are getting ready to set sail. The, the gangplank has been removed, and the anchor has been you know, taken out of the water, the sails are unfurled, and there is um, a nice, you know, there is a nice breeze, no, nice wind that is hitting the sails as you guys are head towards open water. Uh, Marwan, uh, I mean, Roland, what are you doing? I'm nearby the captain just watching everything go along. When things get quieter, I'm going to play pull out my musical instrument and start if the cat says, Captain, if he doesn't mind, I'll start playing to help. He, Captain Dog says, no, a, a little music will, you know, make the yes. journey go go even faster. And Evan Wood, what are you up to? <clears throat> Not much, just situational awareness. Okay, just hanging out. Just, you know. Keeping an eye on everybody. That's cool. Looking uh, for, I don't know. Things. Okay. That's uh, people watching. People watching. That's good. Uh, this gentleman right here, um, since you guys are close to Captain Dogwood, Captain Dogwood says, "Well, this be my first mate, um, Steel. Uh, Steel is a dark-skinned gentleman with multiple tattoos on his arms, on his chest. There's a couple actually." On his face. Not on his face, but he has a couple tattoos on his neck, a couple um, skull crossbones and anchors, you know, typical sailor fare. And he just merely nods um, when he is introduced and, you know, you know, squats down, not squats, but leans down to the captain and whispers something and the captain just nods and... So, and just points and steel goes off into onto the deck. Um, can all of you roll perception checks for me? Um, disadvantage to Marwan because you are so high up right now. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. All right, Marwan, you can't see very well because you are so high up um, in one of the crow's nests. Uh, Evanwood and Marwan, you notice in the distance. You mean, that, you mean me and Roland? Ro you and Roland. Because Ro Roland rolled a 14, I rolled a 22. Yes, sorry about that. Um, you and Roland, well, he rolled a 22, and you both rolled a 22 on his perception. Oh, oh, that was a performance check. The yes, first one. yes. Um, you notice that out in the, um, you know, kind of close there, you know, there's a nice pod of porpoises jumping alongside the ship the the, wi the wind is steady uh, there is the faint smell of the faint smell of vomit and stale piss but you know also the 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 the, the, the strong smell of the salty sea and while you are you know, marauding about on the ship uh, a, a, a gentleman in red well in you know has he has a red sash you know beige raggy vest and these um these brown tattered pants uh comes actually walks up to roland not being sneaky ish but you know since there's so much activity going on in the ship he, he could have been easily missed if you guys weren't paying attention and he goes up to roland and he says do you know any um sea shanties well, actually i was I, I, there's a song about a river uh keelboat man mm. or i can sing the song about the mermaid the mermaid song or do you prefer the the old classic? What do you do with a drunken sailor? It's a very carousing song. I I would go with the third choice. That I that 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 you know I think a lot of the crew can um can relate to that tale. <laughs> Are you looking it up? Yes. I think a lot of the crew can relate to that really? tale. <laughs> oh, what do you do with a drunken sailor? <laughs> What do you do with a drunken sailor early in the morning? Um, Marwin, anyway. there is a seagull that... Way head up, she rises, way head up, she rises, way head up, she rises early in the morning. Um, and some of the crew starts singing along with you, Roland. Uh, Marwin, there is a seagull that, you know, land, you know, lands close to you while you're up in the crow's nest, one of the crow's nests. And he just, uh, uh, he looks, you know, out in the water, nonchalantly, he or she. I'm just going to have a moment with the seagull, just staring out. <laughs> Their eyes connect. Instantly, yeah. they have a moment. He looks at, he or she looks at you, you look at he, he, he or she, and then, and then he, you guys just stare off into the water, just... Watching the 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 waves. Okay, that that's fine. You're you're having a moment. Do you, want me to, do, do you want me to keep singing? I can keep going. We'll pretend your character is singing. Um, the the gentleman in with the red sash introduces himself as as Scar, um, because of the probably. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because of you know said large scar that is on his face, and he says, "So where are you? Where are you? Where are y'all headed?" Um, and he's addressing both Evanwood and Ro well, um, Everwood. And what what did you say your name was again, Roland? I'm sorry. Uh, I I'm actually can't really talk with him if I'm singing. Well, okay, then he he. If I'm singing to the crew, wait, hey, 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 I'm trying, hey, hey, I'm trying, <laughs> hey, 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 I think he's expecting Everwood to speak for you rather than rather than you, Roland. So where are y'all headed? If you don't mind me asking. Everwood, 
Are you just- I'm reading about sea shanties. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, do you want me to play some? Oh, no, we don't. I have them. I have them on my computer. I just don't want to play them through the mic right now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, where are y'all headed? I mean, we're going to Neverwinter, but, I mean, are you guys, you got, you guys got business in Neverwinter, or, and he, yeah. while he's talking to you, Ev Evan Wood, he's, you know, coiling some rope that's nearby, and just checking the strength of it. Wait, are we going to Neverwinter? I thought we were going to Luskin. Yeah. You guys are headed to Luskin, but... You know, he's he's just by way of Neverwinter or something. Probably. I don't remember. Where's the ship actually chartered to take us to? I thought we were going direct there. The the ship is. If I could find the, did I have a map? I had a. Ma I thought I had a map, but I guess the map is not lower in. The... You guys are headed to Luskin. I'm sorry. Um. So sorry. You guys are headed to Luskin. So you guys are headed to Luskin, right? Well, we're mm -hmm. stopping in Luskin. We're continuing after, but Cap old captain says that you guys need a ride there. Uh, Chartered just to Luskin. Uh, where are you guys? Um, where are you guys? What are you guys doing there? Hunt white dragon hunting or something like that? Might. Might be. Good. Good. Good time of year to do that. And the winters have been. Not too harsh. Hard, um, I mean, there could be worse. Um, as he's talking to you, the ship cat kind of meanders over to Roland while he's playing and starts... Now the cat's on him. Need the cat. There we go. Um, and starts rubbing himself, him or herself. Uh, it's, this is like this gray furred raggedy looking hard to thing. Tell it's hard to tell gender on a cat. Wait, why is there a cat? Meow. On a ship. Uh, rats. Rats. Okay, that'll make sense. Meow. I'll buy it. I'll allow it. And he starts, he or she starts pawing at, you know, you can't really see, you know, the, the what the cat's carrying, so. But he's just, he or she starts pawing at just Roland's leg while you got, while he is singing. Um... Scar says, so, so you're with a jester, a musician, and I assume you are a mercenary of some sort by... Just being a bodyguard. Just, just being a bodyguard today. Just being a bodyguard. Is there... Did, 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 your, did your jester land on his head while... He, you know, while he was a child or something, he's he's looking at Ro, he's looking up at Marwin, who is having a moment with the seagull. They say that he's been to the edge of the world, stared at the abyss. I see. Well, good luck. <laughs> he is uh, you. You have quite the character up there. Um, well, he makes the kids throw the money at us, so. Oh, that's that, that that's all well and good. Marwan, as you are up there, the your your friend who helped you up uh will roll his check easily and then climbs up. Next you you notice him climbing up. It's it's not too big of a it's not it's not too, it's loud, but you know, because of the wind in your whistling in your ear. But he comes up to you and he's like Hey, Stop. I think you're supposed the water? to have two people in the crow's nest. <laughs> well, he's probably at the edge, just, you know, not climbing in, but just looking up. You, uh, enjoying the water? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we were kind of having a moment, and you're kind of, you know, overstepping your bounds a little bit. He, he, you know, he eyes the seagull. My 